I made a dungeon crawler with no game engine. You might be asking, What is a dungeon crawler? And how did you make a game with no game engine? Well, I'm glad you asked, because a dungeon crawler isn't really what it sounds like. It's a popular game genre where players loot and battle enemies in a maze like Labyrinth. As for the game engine part, I basically got tired of using Godot. Listen, Godot, it's not you, it's me. And Unreal and Unity make my computer sound like it's going to explode, so I'm using Visual Studio. Now Visual Studio is not a game engine. It's an IDE. Not to be confused with an IED. This is the police! IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. But that's for nerds to understand. And we're cool, so... All we need to know is you type stuff in here, click this button up here, and boom, you're a coder. Okay, first things first, we need to make a basic room to build off of. And after a bit of code later, this is what I got. Just a square room. But I think it looks pretty good for just using hyphens and vertical bars. Next up, we need to add in the player. There we go, a little controllable player that can move around and collide with walls. But right now, we have a good solitary confinement simulator, but not a very good dungeon crawler. So we need to add random room generation, so the player can actually explore. Okay, here's the game plan. Basically, we have this chart here, where each square represents a room in our dungeon. And each of these rooms will have a letter sequence consisting of N, S, E, or W, or a combination of multiple. These are representing North, South, East, and West, and are basically where our doors will be in the room. And while the dungeon generates itself, it checks rooms beside each other and makes sure they have opposite doors correlating to each other, so you can go back and forth between rooms. So whenever we want to generate the next room, we can just move the character up on this map, get the letter sequence from that room, and we have all the information we need to generate the doors for that room. And after a bit of coding later, this is what it looks like in Visual Studio. Basically, every time you start the game, it'll generate one of these 5x5 five five maps for you to explore, giving the player 25 rooms to walk around. Okay, let's take a look at this in-game. So this looks pretty good. You can see the doors or the hashtags, and when you get close to them, it gives you a prompt if you'd like to enter. You can also cleanly go back and forth between rooms. And right now, you can walk through the whole dungeon and find absolutely nothing. Like every good dungeon crawler, we need to have loot. Loot can be randomly found generated throughout the dungeon, and is represented by the letter L in the game. And when you pick it up, it'll give you a little prompt at the bottom of the screen telling you what you got. The loot pool consists of healing potions, coins, and swords. And there's also now an inventory where you can store all of your stuff. As for the use of these items, well, healing potions are pretty self-explanatory. The coins, well, You'll find out later what those are used for. As for the swords, well, when you equip them in your inventory, you actually get a damage bonus. But the damage bonus gained from your sword depends on its rarity. Basically, the higher percentage you are through a dungeon, the more likely you'll get a rare sword from a loot pull. Now there actually is a way to get even rarer swords than legendary and do even more damage, but we'll talk about that later in the video. Why did you add swords if there's not even enemies in the game yet? Well, you'll be happy to hear that I actually just added enemies. Just like loot, enemies spawned randomly throughout the dungeon, and are represented by the letter E in the game. Enemies will actually chase you down in the room. This helps prevent people from just skipping through all the rooms without fighting any enemies. And just like swords, as you progress through the dungeon, enemies get more and more health and damage. Once an enemy actually catches you, I created this fight screen that has a countdown and shows the difficulty of the enemy you found. Once the battle starts, you can see the enemy on the right side of the screen and the player on the left side. Just below each of them is their health. How combat works in this game is you have to type in the red letter sequence which is randomly generated each turn. If you type in the sequence correctly and press enter, you hit the enemy. If you type in incorrectly, you miss the enemy. After the player's turn, the enemy gets a chance to hit, dealing a set amount of damage determined by the enemy's difficulty. As for the player's damage, it's determined by the rarity of their sword. 
and whoever's the last one standing wins and gets this cool victory screen. Now, I had thought about adding a timer during the combat, so there's a bit of pressure behind having to type in the sequence correctly, but I ended up not doing that as I thought it might be a little too difficult, especially near the end when enemies are doing half your health. I also thought about making it so when you kill an enemy, you also get a random piece of loot, so either coins or healing potion. But I decided against it, as you already get a lot of loot from the dungeon, and I couldn't think of anything unique for the enemies to drop. If you have any suggestions, drop them down in the comments. I also think these small animations I made, moving the character and enemy back and forth when they attack, added a lot to the combat. Speaking of enemies, I think this would be a good time to take a look at the boss. So at the very end of the dungeon, we have the game's boss, represented by the letter B. He's not too different from regular enemies, other than being incredibly strong. To defeat him, players need to be at full health and have at least a legendary sword. And I think it's about time I finally reveal how you get the best sword in the game. The Merchant, represented by the letter M, he can be found roughly halfway through the dungeon. And in exchange for coins, he will sell you healing potions and swords of different rarities including the God Sword, the strongest sword in the game. It costs 1,000 coins, and if I'm being honest, I've playtested this game a lot and have never been able to get it. I don't even know if it's possible, but I guess it serves as a cool extra challenge for players. Another cool feature of the Merchant is you can sell your old swords to him in exchange for coins, so you can keep your inventory clean and get some extra spending money. I also added a game menu and named the game Zero to Hero, because, well, the character's kind of a zero. I also included a small tutorial that explains the basic controls. And thanks for all the nice comments and feedback on my last video. I really appreciated it, and tried to implement some of the suggestions in this video. Also, let me know if you'd like me to put this game on itch.io, so you can try it out for yourself. But that's about it from me. Thanks for watching.